For several days, a large werewolf has been scaring the residents here. You know that the werewolf has a wife, and she's the only person who can calm the monster down and help him return to his human form. You have found three girls. Each of them might be the werewolf's wife you're looking for. You ask his wife to approach him, but none of the girls admits she's the one you need, so you have to make your own choice. Do you see some wool on the girl's clothes? It's the wolf's fur, which means she's the wife. She walks up to the monster, hugs it, and the werewolf turns into a human. You're hungry. You drop by a pizzeria. The owner of the restaurant says that someone has taken all his weekly earnings from the safe. The thief wore gloves and left no fingerprints. The video cameras were turned off. You know this pizzeria has had several similar incidents over the past year. Every time, the insurance company paid the owner the entire amount that had been stolen. You're sure the owner took his own money to use the insurance again. Take a look at the office and prove that the owner is guilty. Look at the air vent. Behind the grated hatch, you can see the bundles of the stolen money you've been looking for. Suddenly, someone shoved Stacy into the water. Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife. She had recently lost it, and Luke found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife? The third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. When Stacy gave the necklace to its rightful owner, Neptune snapped his fingers. His guards brought Luke. Neptune said, I'll let you go home safely, but you have to choose the right door. There were demons behind the first door. They were ready to eat anyone who dared to come in. There was lava all over the floor of the room behind the second door. And finally, there was a laser beam that could cut through anything it touched behind the third door. Which door should Stacy and Luke choose? The third one, they can crawl under the beam without touching it. You were in a hurry and forgot to lock the apartment door while leaving. Someone got in and locked the door from the inside, and you had to use the key to open it. You see a human silhouette standing in the shadows and realize that you know this person. Who is it? It's the woman who asked you to help her brother. She was wearing a red bracelet. The silhouette has the same accessory. I came here to thank you in person. The door was open, but you weren't at home, the woman says. A mysterious biologist invites you to his home for dinner. He takes you down to the basement and puts three plates of weird items on the table. One has wild mushrooms with white gills. The second is filled with castor beans. The third has some fish brains. Which one is safe to eat? The plate of fish brains is the only dish that isn't poisonous. Someone got into Matthew's house during a severe rainstorm and took a lot of expensive stuff. The man called the police. They came over and started to interview the neighbors. Nicole said she lived alone and worked from home. She was inside the whole day. Jerry explained he was a chef in an Italian restaurant. He came back from work only half an hour ago. Sophia told the police she hadn't left home because she was ill. Who was the intruder? It was Nicole. She claimed that she'd been inside the entire day, but there was a wet umbrella in the corner. Kim and Ashley are best friends. They decided to spend summer vacation in Italy together. They were very lucky to buy cheap plane tickets. Their flight was at 10 a.m., Unfortunately, when the girls arrived at the airport, they realized it was the wrong one. Now, they have two options. To take a high-speed train for $100 to go to the right airport, or stay here and buy tickets for a later flight for $400. What should they choose? The second option. Look at the clock on the wall. It's 9.55 a.m. 
the boarding for their flight is already over. They won't make it even if they take a high-speed train. Kim and Ashley bought new tickets. They went to the airport restaurant to drink coffee. But one weird detail scared Kim away. She suggested they should leave that place as soon as possible. What did Kim see? This woman over there is a zombie. Wow! How did she get through security? When it was time to finally board the plane, it turned out there were no more economy class seats left. Kim and Ashley were offered to fly in business class. There, the girls saw three people. When the flight attendant served them fresh juice, she whispered that Kim and Ashley were extremely lucky. They were about to travel next to a famous Italian billionaire. Can you guess which of these passengers is the billionaire? This glamorous lady is a good candidate. But it's very unlikely a billionaire will wear a 100% polyester coat. This guy's business suit is very elegant, but look at his shoes. They seem quite cheap and worn out. This funny gentleman must be the real billionaire. Although his outfit is rather casual, his gold watch looks very expensive. Once, a bank was robbed. The police suspected that one of the bank's security guards had helped the criminals. Detective Justin had to question three of them. The first security guard told him he had heard some shouting and rushed there, but by the time he arrived, the criminals had already been gone. The second security guard explained he had been drinking a cup of coffee at that moment and hadn't even heard anything. And the third guard said he had run after the thieves, but he had to lace his boots. Without a second thought, he crouched near an emergency exit. At that very moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came back, the criminals had been gone. Justin immediately understood which guard was guilty. Who was it? It was the third guard. All emergency doors open outwards for safety reasons. The police have been looking for Kyle for two days. The guy went hiking and never came back. Finally, he was found. Someone had hit him on the head and left him lying in the bushes. Kyle only managed to say, friend, in a weak voice, and lost consciousness. The police officers had three suspects, all of them Kyle's friends. Zachary said he spent the last days at work getting ready for a conference. Jesse told the detective he'd sprained his ankle and had been in bed for four days. And Billy explained he'd been to New York for business. The man even showed the police officers his boarding pass. Who's behind the accident with Kyle? Police immediately noticed that Billy had showed just one boarding pass. Then how did he get back from New York? His story sounds fishy. Uh-oh. Tommy was exploring old caves outside the city when he got trapped in a mysterious dungeon. There were three ways out, but only one of them was safe. Behind the first door, a fire was raging. Behind the second door, there was acid rain which could melt any substance within seconds. Behind the third door, there was a huge brown bear that hadn't eaten for two years. Which way should Tommy choose? Tommy should choose the third way. No animal can go for two years without food and survive. Barely. <laughs> it was a stormy day and it had been raining for several hours straight. A car accident happened in a tunnel. The yellow car crashed into the red one. The driver of the yellow car said it had been raining so heavily he hadn't seen anything. So, the accident wasn't totally his fault, but the police asked the man to stop lying and claimed it was all his fault. Why? The accident happened in the tunnel. It couldn't be raining there. Mrs. Cabell is the owner of a small company producing expensive designer cups. On Friday, when the working week was finally over, she got a call from her bank. The woman found out that someone had stolen all the money she had saved. Mrs. Cabell realized it must have been one of her workers. So, she asked each of them what they had been doing that day. Sloan, a sales manager, said she'd been talking to their clients and looking for new ones. Atticus, a potter, said that he always made one cup a day, and he showed all the cups he had done that week. Sierra, a designer, said that she'd been working. 
but also admitted she hadn't really been productive that day because of some family issues. Who lied? Atticus, there are five working days in the regular week. The man said he made one mug a day, but he only showed four mugs. It means he missed one day of work. Oh no! Someone broke into Monsieur Dupont's house, broke into his home office, and stole some important things from his safe. Here are two photos of the safe before and after the theft. Will you be able to find five things that the criminal stole? They stole a wad of cash, a ticket to Lyon, and an expensive watch, a necklace, and a gold statuette. Unfortunately for the thief, Gabriel Dupont is actually a retired detective. What a great way to remember the old days! Gabriel decides to examine the house and look for possible traces of the criminal. Do you see anything suspicious in this picture? There are boot marks on the floor. The size is quite large. These are, most likely, the footprints of a man's shoes. Now let's go to the hallway where the footprints lead. Do you see anything suspicious here? There are shards of glass on the floor. It's strange because none of the windows seem to be broken. Could the thief have shattered something that belonged to him? The criminal entered the house through the window. Gabriel decides to explore the garden. Are there any traces there? It seems the criminal dropped his hat in a hurry. Now it's time to listen to witnesses. The day before, there were three people in the house. Gabriel's wife, Chloe, their maid, Mary, and the gardener, Adam. Each of them claims to have seen the criminal, but their stories differ dramatically. Chloe says, I was walking along the corridor and noticed a shadow in the garden. It was a man with long brown hair. He ran away as soon as he saw me, so I thought he was just passing by. Mary says, I was going to the second floor and noticed the shadow. It was a tall man wearing glasses, and I think he was bald. He noticed me and slipped through the window. It looked as if he dropped something when he was running away. I immediately called you, Monsieur Dupont. And Adam says, I was planting flowers in the garden. At one point, I looked up and saw a shadow in the hallway. It was a woman. She was tall, with curly hair. I started running towards the house, but when I arrived, she was already gone. Who is right? Mary, it looks like Adam just saw Chloe, and Chloe spotted Adam, but they didn't recognize each other. As for Mary, she thought that the man had been bald because he'd had a hat on. She also said that she'd been wearing glasses. That's where the shards came from. Gabriel asks Mary for more details. She draws a portrait of the thief, a middle-aged man wearing a hat and glasses. The criminal stole tickets to Lyon, so Gabriel decides to go there. He takes a bus to the airport, on his way, he makes a decision to brush up on his detective skills. Which of the passengers doesn't have a ticket? The baby in that woman's arms. Gabriel boards the plane and decides to practice again. Which of the passengers is married? The girl with a ring on her finger. Gabriel arrives in Lyon. He comes to the hotel to ask about the criminal and is now waiting for his turn to speak to the receptionist. While he's waiting, can you guess which of these people is not a tourist? This man. He's the only one who doesn't have a suitcase. Neither does he have any souvenirs with him. 
Finally, it's Gabriel's turn. He comes up to the receptionist. Hello, he says. I'm a detective investigating crime. Could you please provide me with the footage from your security camera for the past few days? Of course, detective. But could you please help me to solve another crime first? I think my dog has stolen some of my papers. Can you help the receptionist find the dog? Here it is. The dog is hiding under the stairs in the hall. Gabriel has received the footage from the cameras for the last four days. Can you find the suspects in these photos? Here he is. On the first day, he arrived wearing glasses, but without a hat. But look, a couple of days later, he got a new hat and an expensive suit. That's the man I need, Gabriel says, showing the man in the photos. Oh, I know him, the receptionist replies. He's usually absent at night and returns only in the morning, at around 10 o'clock. Gabriel decides to check in at that hotel and wait for the suspect to return. After taking his things to his room, he sits down to solve a few logic puzzles before going to bed. The first one is easy. Here it is. Two fathers and two sons found three oranges and shared them. Everyone got a whole orange. How is it possible? There were three people, a grandpa, a dad, and a son. The second puzzle is harder, but Gabriel still solves it easily. Can you? A woman needs to bake six pies. How can she do that in 15 minutes if maximum four pies can be placed in a pan, and one pie needs to be baked for five minutes on each side? Step 1. We put four pies in a pan and bake them for five minutes. Step 2. We turn over two pies, remove the other two, put two new pies and bake them for another five minutes. Step 3. We remove the two finished pies, turn the other two over, put the two half-cooked pies from the first batch and bake them for five minutes. The task is done. The last riddle has a catch. It goes like this. A deaf and mute man entered a store to buy a pencil sharpener. He placed his index finger in his left ear and made a rotational movement near his right ear with the other hand. The seller immediately understood what the man wanted. Sometime later, a blind man entered the same store. How did he explain to the seller that he wanted to buy scissors? He just said it aloud. He was blind, not mute. In the morning, the detective wakes up and goes downstairs to wait for the suspect. And he indeed comes in at 10.15 a.m. It's a middle-aged man wearing glasses. He looks at his watch and says, Oh no, I have to hurry. I'm already 15 minutes late. Gabriel immediately jumps up. It's you. You're the thief who robbed me. How did Gabriel understand that? The watch the suspect was looking at was the one that once belonged to Gabriel. No, wait, I... The man says, backing away, and then, suddenly, he dashes away. Oh no! Gabriel starts running after him, but the man has already managed to hide somewhere. He must have chosen one of these three ways to escape. There is a police car blocking this road. The second road leads to an alley. So dark that you can see nothing. The third road is blocked by a big crowd of people. Think! Which way did the culprit choose? He probably picked the third road. Of course, he wouldn't run towards the police. It'd also be very dangerous for him to run in the dark. What if he tripped over, fell down, and got caught? So, he chose the crowd to blend in with. Gabriel notices the criminal in the crowd. He runs after him, but the man disappears around the corner. Gabriel follows him. On the left, 
he sees the central square of the city. There's a cafe in the center. On the right, he spots a road leading to the park. Which way did the criminal most likely choose? The one leading to the central square, of course. There are not so many people in the park. The culprit would look suspicious running along a deserted path. And if he took a seat in the cafe, the detective would immediately spot him. Finally, Gabriel reaches the square. While he was running, he managed to request police assistance. Now he needs to find everyone who looks like the culprit before the man escapes. Can you find five possible suspects? Here they are. These are all men in hats and glasses. The police grab the suspects and take them to the police station for questioning. They all look very similar. Unfortunately, the criminal has already managed to hide the watch. So, Gabriel has to find another way to identify him. Who is the thief? This man, he has the same wart on his nose as the thief did. Gabriel recognizes the criminal. His real name is Charles Winston. I didn't do anything, he claims. I started running away because I was scared, and you have no proof that I'm a criminal. Really? Gabriel suggests that the police should examine the criminal's room in the lobby. They find a safe there. The password is a four-letter word. There's also a hint next to the safe. 7, 15, 12, 4. Can you figure out the code? The password is GOLD. The numbers correspond to the ordinal numbers of these letters in the alphabet. In the safe, there's Gabriel's gold statuette. Unfortunately, this is all they find. The criminal managed to sell the rest. But what matters the most for Gabriel is that justice has prevailed. When it was finally time to board the plane, it turned out that there were no more economy class seats left. Oh. Kim and Ashley were offered to fly in business class. Oh, yes. There, the girls saw three people. When the flight attendant served them fresh juice, she whispered that Kim and Ashley were extremely lucky. They were about to travel next to a famous Italian billionaire. Oh. Can you guess which of these passengers is the billionaire? This glamorous lady is a good candidate, but it's very unlikely a billionaire would wear a 100% polyester coat. This guy's business suit is very elegant, but look at his shoes. They seem quite cheap and worn out. This funny gentleman must be the real billionaire. Although his outfit is rather casual, his gold watch looks very expensive. The glamorous lady began to chat with Kim and Ashley. She told them she had recently visited an exotic island with her friends. Then she showed the girls some pictures. When the lady went to the restroom, Ashley whispered to Kim, This woman is a liar. She photoshopped this picture. Oh. How did Ashley know that? It's all about the shadows. They all look natural, except this one. People are sitting in their seats. The lights turn off. Someone is chewing popcorn. Someone is drinking soda. The movie starts. This is a horror movie. Someone screams. The ticket taker enters the hall. Several people haven't paid for their tickets. Guess who? No one has a ticket here. Free entrance, the note pinned to the back door claims. Once, on a cold winter night, someone stole jewelry from a famous singer's house. The thief didn't manage to run far away because a police car was passing by. The burglar hit the bag with the jewelry in the snow and disappeared into the crowd. Detective Anderson managed to catch two suspects. Look at them and try to guess who robbed the singer.
If you dig snow with your bare hands, they will turn red. This man has red fingers and palms. But that woman could dig snow wearing a pair of gloves, so she could be the thief too. But she wouldn't be able to run in such high heels. After the meeting, Zoe unboxed a delivery from a popular writer. He sent Zoe his new masterpiece in secret. Zoe didn't say anything about this to her colleagues. But one of them was actually trying to steal the script. Can you guess who this person is? It's the assistant. He's using his front camera to take pictures of the mirrored ceiling while Zoe is looking through the script. You're walking along the beach. Suddenly, you hear a scream. A woman is calling for help. She's drowning. You run into the water and swim toward her. As soon as you approach her, you see three more people. They're all screaming, but only one of them needs help. The rest are mer people who want to take you to their kingdom. How can you find out which one is human? Dive under the water to see who has a fishtail. Richard likes abandoned buildings and old castles. Today, he's going to check a huge house that belonged to a vampire a long time ago. Well, that's what the legends say. Richard certainly doesn't believe this. He takes his camera and sets off. It's dark and cold inside the house. Crackling sounds are coming from the corridor. Richard shines a flashlight and sees three vampires. Richard starts running away, but then he stops and returns. It seems these vampires are fake. How did the guy understand this? There's a mirror on the ceiling above the first vampire, and he gets reflected there. The second vampire has no fangs. The third one? Uh-oh, he seems to be real. Better run! Now, Richard wants to visit an abandoned hospital. There are rumors that werewolves live there. Richard is sure it's a myth. He's walking around dark hospital wards all night, but finds nothing. He's about to leave, but four men block the exit. They are howling and growling. Which of them is the real werewolf? No one. The full moon is shining through the windows. But these people haven't turned into monsters. But still, Richard runs away. It seems these guys are really crazy. A rich man comes to an exhibition of modern art. He's going to buy a new painting for his collection. The owner of the exhibition shows him three works of different artists. In the first picture, there's a green triangle with a sunflower in the middle. The second painting is of a tiger taking a selfie on its phone. In the third picture, there's a flying house. The collector is sure that one of the paintings is fake. Which one? Each canvas has the artist's signature and the date when it was created. The painting with the tiger is dated 1957. There were no mobile phones and selfies at that time. This picture is fake. Martin's nervous because today is his first DJ performance at an electronic music festival. He goes on the stage. The crowd is cheering. Martin puts his headphones on and turns on the first track. Music is playing, but people aren't dancing. Why? The music is only playing in the DJ's headphones. Martin hasn't connected the wire to the speakers, see? Jack is walking through an ancient, abandoned city in the desert. Treasure is hidden somewhere here. Jack checks the map and finds the right place. He starts digging. Six hours later, exhausted, he hits something with a shovel. It's a chest. Jack pulls it out of the ground, rips off the rusty lock, and opens it. The chest is filled with ancient gold coins. Each of them costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now Jack is incredibly rich. But he shouldn't be happy because all the coins are fake. Why is that?
Each coin has a date, 145 BCE. It seems they're really old, but people who lived at that time couldn't write BCE on their coins because they didn't know they lived before the current era. A university professor enters a lecture hall, where his colleague, an elderly teacher, is giving a lecture on quantum physics. He's drawing formulas on the board, and his students are using their laptops to take notes. The professor knows that one of these students is sleeping. He starts walking around the room, stopping behind each of them in turn. Who's dreaming right now? Almost all of the students are writing the formulas down in their laptops, except that one. His screen is off. That's because he's fallen asleep. Detective Anderson is chasing a robber dressed in a tuxedo. Suddenly, the criminal runs inside a huge hall. All the people there are formally dressed. Help Detective Anderson find the suspect among them. Catch that guy! He's sweating because he's been running. Leo's boss yelled at the guy because he hadn't completed his weekly work plan. Now, Leo has to spend his entire weekend in the office finishing his work. The boss took Leo's magnetic card so that he couldn't leave the building. Several hours had passed. Leo feels hungry. There's no water or food in the office. But there's a fridge and cooler in the next room behind the door with a magnetic lock. On Monday, Leo gives his boss the completed report. Somehow, the guy managed to get food and water. How did he do it? Leo just went to the refrigerator and got himself some food. No one said the door with a magnetic lock had been locked. Victoria approaches her house. The light bulb turns on automatically and lights her way to the door. Victoria inserts the key and goes inside. A couple of hours later, the doorbell rings. She looks through the peephole and sees a silhouette of a man wearing a hat. Victoria is afraid to open the door, but not because it's a stranger, but because it's not a human. Why does she think that? The light sensor didn't work, so there's no physical body outside. There's a huge airplane hangar on the edge of the desert. Pilot Tyler steps inside and notices a cat sleeping near the ceiling on one of the beams. Tyler decides to save it. There are no stairs and nothing else that can be used to get there. The only thing Tyler sees is a large puddle of water on the floor. How did the cat get there? There was a pyramid of ice cubes. The cat climbed to the top of it and reached the ceiling. Then the ice melted and left the puddle. Gee, I guess I won't mention my theory about the cat drinking so much water to the point of bursting, which then <laughs> propels the cat up in the air and… well, let's stick with the ice cubes. Margaret, Rachel, and Diana are walking down the street, sharing their plans for the weekend. The girls look rich, but only one of them has a lot of money. Who is it? It's Margaret. You can notice the key to a Ferrari in her bag. Rachel had been dreaming of becoming a famous actress. Finally, her dream was about to come true. A famed talent agency had invited Rachel for an interview. She arrived at the office to meet her new agent early in the morning. There were four people in the conference room. Can you tell which one is Rachel's agent? This guy is the only person who doesn't have an employee badge, so he's probably a guest too. This man is wearing a classy, expensive suit, but he brought coffee for everyone. He's an assistant. This lady's mug says world's best lawyer, so she's probably responsible for legal issues. And this relaxed lady over there is Rachel's agent, Zoe. Zoe offered Rachel to take a seat. 
Which play should Rachel choose? This chair is missing one leg. Someone has spilled coffee on this chair. It has written the boss on the drink in this cup and left it on the table next to this chair. And someone has left a sweater on this chair. So Rachel has only one option. Here it is. Once, a prison guard accidentally overheard very disturbing rumors. Someone was planning a prison break. The guard watched all the footage from the surveillance cameras and discovered that two women had been behaving suspiciously. One of them was a former bodybuilder, muscular, with short hair, and covered in tattoos. The other was quiet and reserved. She preferred to spend time on her own and sometimes cried in her cell. After watching the video several times, the guard figured out which woman was planning to escape. Can you do the same? It's the second prisoner. There's a file in her bun. She can use it to get through the metal bars. Mark comes up to the table. There are three apples, but only one of them is safe to eat. The other two are poisonous. Unfortunately, Mark can't skip breakfast. So which apple should he eat? Look, this apple has a caterpillar in it. It means there's no poison in the fruit, and it's safe to eat. These three women, Jessica, Mary, and Olivia, went shopping. Two of them are pregnant, and one is just trying to steal a watermelon. Can you tell which one is hiding a watermelon? It's Olivia. She's wearing heels. It's not the kind of shoes a pregnant woman would choose to wear. Nathan, a successful entrepreneur with a multi-million dollar business, and his friend Jackson, a famous private detective, returned from a long-term trip abroad. They decided to stop by at Nathan's villa on the way to the city. When the men entered the house, though, they saw that everything more or less valuable had been taken away. The entire villa was a mess. I've only been away for a month! What happened here?" exclaimed Nathan. Jackson took an apple from the dining room table and started to munch on it thoroughly. The lock isn't broken. It means the person who took your stuff had the key. After a while, the detective asked Nathan to invite three people. Mia, Nathan's niece, told Jackson she hadn't visited her uncle's home. She had been having serious problems with her car for already two months. And the villa was too far away from the city to get there by public transport. Sarah, the maid, claimed that she had stopped by several weeks ago to bring some food and tidy up. But since then, she hadn't been to the villa. Adam, the gardener, told the detective he had been on vacation and had just returned. He even offered to show his plane tickets to Jackson. The detective figured out immediately who was behind the mess. You have 8 seconds to figure it out. It was the maid. She said she brought food several weeks ago. But the apple Jackson grabbed from the table was perfectly fresh. Once, Ms. White heard someone crying. It was her little student, Abigail. The girl told the teacher her cookies had been disappearing from her locker. Someone had been taking them for already several weeks. But Abigail didn't know who. Ms. White decided to help the girl. They equipped the locker with a simple alarm that had to go off if someone who wasn't Abigail opened the door. They hid behind the corner and began waiting. In 10 minutes, they heard the alarm. When they reached the locker, it was already empty, and there was no one nearby. But Ms. White noticed somebody disappear behind the art room door. She rushed inside, but everything looked normal. And still, the teacher needed no more than a minute to understand who had been eating Abigail's cookies. Look at the picture of the art room carefully. Can you find out the answer within 8 seconds? It's the girl on the left. 
her paintings black and white, but there are only various shades of blue on her palette. And maybe the cookie crumbs are a giveaway too. I don't know. One perfume company hires new staff. They must swear an oath of loyalty to the company if they want to get a job. Ten people are saying the words of the corporate oath simultaneously. But some of them are cheating. Help the directors figure out who these people are. This guy keeps his fingers crossed. And the man on the left is standing with his legs crossed. They won't be loyal to the company, so the director doesn't hire them. Two influential media moguls are having lunch at an expensive restaurant. They're discussing the merger of their companies. The transaction amount is several billion dollars. They're whispering since the terms of this deal are top secret, and they suspect that someone can hear them. And they're right. Some curious people are eavesdropping on the conversation between the two businessmen. Try to find them. The girl at the next table is reading a newspaper that is turned upside down. She's obviously trying to overhear what the billionaires are talking about. This guy over there is listening to music, but the headphone wire is not connected to anything. Another girl is sitting at the table in the corner with a cocktail. But instead of an umbrella, there's an antenna in her glass. She's recording the conversation. Where are my employees? A boss shouts. He's furious because three people haven't come to the office. He calls each of them to find out the reason. All three tell him they got ill. The boss doesn't believe them, so they have to arrive at the office. Mary is wearing a warm jacket, hat, and scarf. She sneezes, coughs, and looks sick. Lori is walking on crutches. Her leg is in a cast. Sometime later, Michael appears. He's got a hand injury, and now he can't type. The boss is sure that one of them is faking. Who is it? Mike's left arm is broken, but his phone is in his left pocket. He must have used his broken arm to put it there, which means he's pretending. Apparently, he just didn't want to come to work. Ice will melt if you heat it. But if you heat me, I'll become solid. What am I? I'm an egg. You buy this thing to eat, but you never eat it. What is it? It's a plate. Mia was going back home one evening. It was 11 p.m., and she had to cross a small dark park in front of her house. Suddenly, she heard footsteps behind. Someone grabbed her bag and ran away. The girl called the police, and they questioned four suspects. Jack said, I was choosing an outfit for a party. Camilla was getting ready for her final exam at home. Andrew told the police he had been watching birds in the park. Nora was at her yoga class. After the interview, the police understood who was behind the robbery. Can you? It was Andrew. At 11 p.m., it's too dark to see birds. James left a folder with important documents on the table in his home office and went to a business meeting. When he returned, he found out that the documents had disappeared. James had three suspects. His brother said, I've been swimming in the pool since you left. I haven't seen or heard anything. The cook replied, Tomorrow we're having a party. I've been preparing the food. The security guard told James, I've been outside all this time, checking the garden for mice. Who knows where the documents are? It's the security guard. His job description doesn't include pest control. An accident happened at a busy crossroads in a small town. 
a driver who caused the crash left in a hurry. Luckily, several witnesses managed to describe the car. A police officer headed to the suspect's house. There, he saw a car that looked exactly like the one from the description, but its owner claimed that he had spent all day at home. The police officer knew the suspect was lying in no time. How? He touched the car hood. It was still hot from the engine that had worked not so long ago. You're walking along a railroad track. Suddenly, you see a speedy train approaching you. Instead of getting off the track immediately, you run toward the train. Why do you risk your life this way? When you notice the train, you're on a bridge. You can't leave the track right away and have to run to the closest place where you can do it. Nancy and Mike were going to the Carnival of Riddles, which was scheduled to be in their town during the weekend. It was a very popular carnival that was traveling the country, and everybody was so excited. So, when they arrived, they saw a very long line, and it seemed like they had to wait for many hours to be able to get in. But the ticket salesman left his booth and walked in front of the crowd. He said that he was going to give a riddle to everyone. Since this was the Carnival of Riddles, those who could answer correctly would be able to get inside earlier than others. The riddle was this. I am the beginning of eternity. I am the end of time and space. I am the start of every end. I am the end of every place. What am I? The answer is the letter E. Nancy and Mike were so happy that they knew the answer and didn't have to wait to get in. But even though they were able to move in front of the line, they still had to pay for the tickets. But they were so expensive. The salesman offered them another riddle. If they could answer it, he would give them a 50% discount. I have an X number of candy apples. If I count them by threes, the remainder is two. If I count them by fives, the remainder is three. If I count them by sevens, the remainder is two. How many candy apples do I have? Mike was kind of a genius, so he knew the answer immediately. Do you? The answer is 23. Nancy and Mike were glad to have been able to save some cash to buy snacks. Nancy wanted to get something sweet for herself and her brother, so they went to the candy booth. They had three options to choose from. They could either buy cotton candy, candy cane, or a candy apple. Which one should they pick? Take a closer look at the cotton candy. There is a teeny tiny spider stuck inside. Yikes! And did you notice that little apple worm inside the candy apple? That's never good. So, they should buy the candy cane. Before leaving the candy booth, Mike wanted to get a gumball too. However, when he inserted his coin into the gumball vending machine, he realized that something was strange. Hey! Do you see it too? Look inside the machine carefully. Not everything in there is a gumball. This and that are eggs. How weird is that? Hey! After eating their candy, they came upon a tent with a sign that said, Enter if you want to see real magic. They were intrigued, so they decided to walk in. There were three different magicians. The first was holding cards in his hands. Then he made them disappear. The second one also had cards, but he was making them levitate. And the third one put a pen through a card, but the card was unharmed after. Only one of them was capable of real magic, and the others were just doing tricks. Can you tell who? Take a closer look at the first magician's sleeves. You can see a corner of the card. He didn't make them disappear, he just hid them. The second magician's cards are attached to a clear thread. 
you can notice it from where the sunlight hits. So the third one is the real deal. Mike was a fan of all things scary, so he convinced his sister to take the haunted house ride. As their cart moved inside the dark tunnel, they encountered three different monsters along the way. A zombie, a ghost, and a mummy. Little did they know that one of them was a real monster. Can you tell which one? Take a look at the zombie. Its makeup is kind of melting, which means that it must be an actor. As for the mummy, look at his ankle. His skin slightly shows under all that mummy gauze. So he must be a dressed up actor as well. That makes the ghost the real monster. So creepy. Nancy didn't enjoy the haunted house ride. She wanted her next ride to be something relaxing. So she chose the carousel. Mike decided to skip this one to explore the carnival more. They agreed to meet later. When Nancy arrived at the carousel, she saw that all the horse seats were taken, except three. But only one of them looked safe to sit on. Which one is that? The second horse mount is cracked. It's not wise to pick that one. And the third horse is slowly moving back and forth even though the carousel is not rotating yet. Its screws must be loose or something. So, she should choose the first one. It's the cutest one anyway. As Nancy was enjoying the carousel, Mike decided to check out the Hall of Mirrors. The information board said that only one person was allowed inside. Mike entered and had so much fun enjoying all the funny reflections of himself on the weird mirrors. But then, suddenly, he screamed with fear. Why is that? Take a closer look at the mirror reflections. One of them doesn't belong to Mike. So, he is apparently not the only one inside, even though the sign said he would be. Mike was so scared of the unexpected reflection. He ran out of the Hall of Mirrors immediately. But as he did, he tripped on a stone and twisted his ankle. So, he decided to visit the first aid tent to get some ice. When he walked in, he saw that the nurse was in panic and in no condition to help him out because there were three pregnant women sitting in front of her, all claiming they were going to give birth now. However, Mike noticed that one of them was lying and faking her pregnancy. Can you tell who? Girl number three is clearly the liar. Take a look at the ultrasound picture in her hand. It has the first girl's name on it. She must have stolen it from her, so she's only pretending to be pregnant. Once the real pregnant ladies left for the hospital, Mike was able to get some ice for his ankle and went to meet his sister. At that moment, they heard an announcement coming from the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, gather up to see the strongest man alive. Don't believe me? I'm not lying. Here he comes. See him with your own eyes. Nancy and Mike wanted to see who this man was, so they joined the crowd. A muscular-looking man entered the stage. He said, I will prove to you how strong I am by breaking this thing with my bare hands. But first, you have to guess what it is. Here is my riddle to you. There was a greenhouse. Inside the greenhouse, there was a white house. Inside the white house, there was a red house. Inside the red house, there were lots of little ones. Nancy knew the answer, so she yelled it out. Can you guess? It's a watermelon, and the strong man was able to break it with his bare hands indeed. So cool! Nancy and Mike were tired, so they decided to call it a day and go home. But before that, they wanted to get a souvenir from the carnival. They picked a beautiful fridge magnet. When they paid for it, the gift shop salesman put three cups upside down on the table and placed their money under one of them. He said he would give their money back and the magnet for free if they could guess which cup had their money after he performed his trick. Watch carefully. Nancy knew where the money was immediately. How about you?
It's here. You thought it was under this one, right? Watch it in slow motion again. Do you see the salesman putting the money under that one with a quick hand movement? Nancy noticed that. What a fun day.